Today, among the four guardian meditations, Sayadaw will speak about the remaining two. The previous two, if he were to go into detail in speaking about uh, the two he's already covered, two months would not be enough. The, the topic of loving kindness or mitta is very broad. <clears throat> if yogis practicing satipatthana give priority to worldly samadhi, worldly concentration, then the momentary concentration will be weak. With worldly concentration, worldly samadhi, uh, that samadhi is not strong enough to distinguish to, between nama and rupa and develop vipassana knowledge. We need the samadhi of vipassana. So we develop the four loving kind, the four guardian meditations, and we develop a metta within that, just enough so that it will, so that it will be a protection. So today, Sayadaw will complete discussing, discussing the remaining two guardian meditations, which are Asubha Bhavana and Maranasati. In the human world, there are many desirable things, and most people spend their time with things that they like with either beautiful sights, one may look at a beautiful view, beautiful pictures, uh, look at the opposite sex. So um, these are things that one likes to see. And if one looks at the things that one likes, then desire for this object, desire arises for the object, and the object is said to capture the virtue. So this type of object is called guna, something which binds or ties, is called guna. And so in Pali, the word for desirable sense objects is kama guna. Sometimes we get what we want easily. Uh, sometimes when we don't, then we turn to uh, trying to get what we want by unjust means. Sounds, too, sounds that we like, capture the person who listens. Fragrances, attractive smells, for one who likes smells, smells can also capture and bind one. People who like tastes, for them, tastes can be binding. Touch uh, with external things, the, the touch of something cool when we're hot, the touch of something warm when we're cold, the touch of clothing, the touch between the opposite sexes. So there are many types of touch that can bind us. And in essence, the things that we like can, uh, when we get what we like, when we get the objects that we like and we don't uh, have mindfulness, then these objects bind us. Our desire for them binds us. And that's why they're called Kama Guna. So th these things in the world, most people spend their time uh, looking for sense pleasures. So when we see uh, these objects as delightful, as good, this is called Subha, Subha in Pali. And if this perception doesn't arise, that things are good, if instead we reflect so that this perception of goodness doesn't arise, and instead of that, the perception of not being good, asubha, if that perception arises, 
then craving tanha won't arise to any extent. There won't be subtle craving for the object when we see it as unattractive. There won't be moderate craving. There won't be extreme craving. None of these will arise. So how good it is, how peaceful to live when tanha, tanha or craving is pacified in this way. So therefore the Buddha gave a method for analyzing one's body, looking at the parts within one's body as individual things in order to dispel the idea that this, the perception that it is attractive in order to have the perception that it is not attractive. If we look at our bodies as a whole, all the different parts are suitable, they're in the right place, so the body as a whole looks good when we see it all together. And people get attached to themselves. People feel craving for their own bodies because they see it as everything in the right place and looking good. There are 32 parts that make up the body. And among these, there are five that are easy to see, obvious. The hair on our heads, the hair on the body, such as the beard, mustache, um, and then nails, fingernails and toenails, and teeth and skin. So these are all easy to see. The other parts that are inside the body, we can't see them, we can imagine them with our mind's eye. But the five that we can see, uh, so that uh, we try to see these as individual parts. A pile of hair, a pile of, of body hair, nails, a pile of nails, a pile of teeth, a pile of skin. <clears throat> so this part, uh, part is called kutasa in Pali, and this, this type of meditation is sometimes called kutasa bhavana. If we see these parts all together in a whole, then the the being, the person looks attractive, but when the parts are seen as separate things uh, in different places, not connected with each other, then it's the, they start to see un, seem unattractive. This body of mind, fragrant, sublime. No, there's no good to be seen in it. There's just. Uh, it's just nourished by the mind, it's nourished by the weather, by food, it's subject to these. And there's just hair, hair of the head, hair of the body, there's nails, teeth, skin. And we try to see these things as separate. So when we see them as a group, then it looks good, and we take pleasure in it, and then there's craving, tanna. But when we see them as separate parts, individual parts, then one doesn't see it as good, one doesn't take pleasure, and tanha doesn't arrive. So we try to see it like this. So that, uh, in order to develop the perception that these things are unattractive. And when one is able to look at the parts of the body and the mind knows it as unattractive, then this asubha bhavana has developed some strength. Human beings each like themselves best. The most beloved person to each of us is ourself. And when one person says to another, I love you, 
this is just talk. When a man says to a woman, I love you, it is completely untrue. What, what they love is themselves. And this is true for everybody. So the person we love most is ourself. And when we see ourself, our body, as separate parts, then we don't see ourself as being attractive. And we don't take pleasure in ourself. And therefore, we don't have craving for ourself. And if we do this in advance, well, why should we do this? Because when we gain a little bit of kanika samadhi, momentary concentration, what can happen is objects that we desire appear in our mind. And for a man, it could happen to have, they could happen to have an image of a woman or a woman, perhaps she may see an image of a man. The, the things that we tend to desire arise in our mind during the practice. And one of the obstacles to, set, to us um, developing wholesome mind state is the desire for sense pleasures, kama, chanda, nivarana. So that, that can arise in the mind. This is an obstacle to our minds being clean. And another one of the obstacles to the hindrances to concentration and to kusala is pyabhara nivarana. That is the obstacle of, of anger. And then there's the inability to keep the mind on the object, the scattered mind, regret and remorse. And there's wavering about the object, not being sure. So all these are disturbances, mental disturbances, and they block clean the clean mind. They prevent the clean mind and they make the mind weak. So when they overwhelm one, then the mind, the basic men mentality is not strong. Meditation is for making our mind strong so that we can see things as they really are, stage by stage, and through developing knowledge, finally gain a happiness that is far better than anything else we have known an unrelinquishable happiness, a happiness that we won't want to let go of, a happiness that is guaranteed. Meditation is for gaining this type of happiness. For yogis who practice with respect and care, some can gain this happiness in seven days. Some may gain it in two weeks if yogis are respectful. If one only pays attention when one is sitting and doesn't develop the practice during the remaining time, then there is no guarantee that one will reach this type of happiness. But if every moment of the time, every waking moment, one sinks one's mind into the body and observes the arising object second by second with the mind focused, collected, steadfast and aware, then energy will develop easily. And for this sum, um, for one who observes in this way moment by moment, the obstacles to concentration, the nivaranas are removed. The mind becomes clean. And at that time, the object, objects can arise in the mind that attract us. Also, ugly things can arise, things that we don't find attractive. So to prevent raga or lust from arising when something desirable arises in the mind. 
to prevent anger from arising when something despicable, hateful arises in the mind. We do this, um, we prepare ourselves for seeing such sights by doing this meditation on the body as parts. Because before, um, if before we get into the practice, we do this protective meditation, if we develop the habit of analyzing the body, seeing it as individual parts, when such things arise, when desirable objects arise in the mind during the practice, or when hateful things arise in the mind, we won't see them as either desirable or as hateful. So the mind will remain clean. There won't be any craving arising. And this is the immediate benefit that we get from doing this asubha bhavana. All beings, including humans, start their existence from the moment of conception. The moment of the fertilization of the ova by the sperm. And from that moment in human beings, there's the element, there are elements which give rise to the hair on our head, the hair on our body, nails, teeth, and skin. Bit by bit, gradually, these parts become complete. And in the case of a human, the human form starts to appear. In the case of an animal, development of an animal, the animal's form appears. So, from the moment of conception, these parts slowly arise. When we look at these parts as individual piles, then there's no human. There's no man. There's no woman. There's just a pile of hair, a pile of body hair, a pile of nails, a pile of teeth, a pile of skin. Only when the perception of female appears do we take pleasure in it, do we crave. Only when this perception of man appears is it some, does it become something that we take pleasure in and crave. So if these, if man and woman, if these don't appear in our mind, how are we going to take pleasure in this? Where is craving going to rise? Instead, what arises is knowledge. When something despicable appears to us, instead of anger or dislike, what arises is knowledge. So for this knowledge to arise, we need to look at our body as parts. And about one minute is enough to do this meditation. The last guardian meditation is Marana Sati. Marana means death, the last moment of our life, the end of our life, and Sati means recollection. So this is this is meditation on the recoll the recollection of death. So once life occurs once we're alive we don't stay this way we don't just die the way we are we age slowly some people slowly age and then die uh, of course some people die young some people die of disease and there's many strange diseases now and Sieroji mentioned Ebola uh, so the the Buddha said that 
When people become immoral, then strange diseases will arise. And if you look at the world, lay people are mostly immoral, monks are mostly immoral, leaders are mostly immoral, the country people are mostly immoral. And when most of the world is immoral like this, then the weather becomes abnormal. And following on the weather becoming abnormal, diseases, strange diseases, arise. And people, one with another, quarrel, become enemies, and fight. So all over the world, these things are happening, and diseases that have never been encountered before are arising. And there's the, one, the doctors search for the medicines for these diseases. But they arise because of lack of morality. So some people die of these diseases, people suffer, worry, and have a lot of sorrow. In life we can die at any time. So some people fear death. But one should reflect. I may, I may die very soon. Death can happen in a moment. Death can happen at any time. My death is sure to come. My life is uncertain. My death is sure to come. So if we reflect on this often, death can come at any time. It can happen in a moment. My life is, my death is sure to come. My life is uncertain. Reflecting on this, one becomes not afraid to die. And the benefit that we get is that it makes us think, well, what is it that's essential to do while I'm alive? And if we think about it, the most important thing to do is to develop the trainings, to develop sila, samadhi, and panya before we die. This is something that we should do while we're still young enough, while we're healthy, while we have the health and can do it. So we have to give priority to this work when we're able. And if we reflect um, on, on the imminence of death, then we will think also, what is it important to do? What should I do in the time that I have left? So reflecting on, the, on death urges us to complete this important work while we're still alive. And this is the benefit of reflecting on the fact of death. When people practice satipatthana, as the yogis are now. The practice of sila makes us truly human. And with samadhi, our mind becomes human. We're able to keep our mind human. And with knowledge, one is able to develop knowledge that is, makes us a special human being. So for yogis practicing like this, the Buddha instructed that if one does recollection of the qualities of the Buddha or the qualities of the Dhamma, then one won't become frightened when one sees fearful objects in the practice. By doing metta bhavana, the meditation on loving kindness, when one sees something dissatisfying, anger won't arise, or greed, hatred, and delusion won't arise. By doing a suba bhavana, then when one sees something enticing, desirable, lovable, lust won't arise. 
Because of doing reflection on death, marana sati, when one experiences pain, then one won't have a lot of regard for one's life and limb. Sometimes people are afraid when they experience pain and then they move here and there, they change their positions. And they, this is because they're afraid of death. People need to observe pain patiently. If we just, uh, if we don't watch the pain wholeheartedly, then we won't gain any confidence over it. We won't be able to overcome it. We have to not care about life and limb when we meditate. And when we don't have this type of concern for our life and limb, then when we observe pain, we can overcome it. And overcoming it, we gain courage. We gain a lot of courage so that we can continue to be brave in the practice. If we back off, we won't gain this courage. So it's necessary for us to develop this attitude towards pain that not to have this regard for one's life and limb. And this comes from reflecting on death. So because of developing the four guardian meditations, including the reflection on the fact of the death of death, may you be able to practice this Dhamma of Satipatthana and make a profit on your life. May you be able to do this in 60 days. Siado urges all of you very seriously to try in this way. <laughs>